Hey everyone, now that the drywall is in, I can start working on the plaster. I'll start by painting a layer of a bonding primer, then lay some mesh to tie it all together, and finally apply a base coat plaster called Structolite. In the last few videos, I've been putting together this barrel vault for upstairs apartment's main bedroom. I documented everything from the demo process to framing the vault, and last week I showed how I bent and put up two layers of quarter inch sheetrock. So now let's take a look at the prep for the base coat of the plaster. I quickly laid some painter's tape to protect the finished piece of trim that covers the underside of the framing, which I'll talk about in a future video that will show all of the trim details for the room. Then I can start painting a bonding primer called Plaster Weld on every surface that will be plastered. I begin with the corners, trying to keep the plaster weld off of the other surfaces that won't be plastered as much as possible. Then I can roll the whole vault. This pink liquid will sit on the surface and later re-emulsify when the plaster gets laid over top to later set again, but this time creating a strong bond between the plaster and the sheetrock. I can now lay some mesh over the whole surface. This is the same fiberglass mesh tape that some people use to patch crack in old plaster, but bigger. This roll is 40 inch wide and has a sticky back for easier application. So I can cut the roll to length and start applying it. I started by trying to roll some more plaster weld after applying the mesh, but wasn't getting very good result. So it led me to try to use a large pull trowel to help lay this stuff on. This worked a lot better. I found that starting in the middle and working my way out works best at avoiding wrinkles and folds. And so once I got pretty good at laying those out, I could get the rest of the room laid out. The ones on the ceiling were a little trickier, but using the pull trowel really helped. I then came back with some three inch wide tape to fill all of the holes I left from the misalignment. And so this was all the prep required for the base coat to go in. So let's take a look at that. The base coat material I'm using is a gypsum based product called Structolite. This stuff really goes on pretty easily when mixed properly, but it is fairly tricky to mix. It'll quickly go from too runny, which makes it very hard to lay overhead, to too sticky, which is harder to level and usually leaves a worse finish. So the mixing is crucial, which is why I trust my wife with it. I like to talk about how we set up the set of responsibilities, as that was the part of the process that was the most daunting to me and because it needed to be executed right for the plaster go to go in properly. I guess I'm trying to get better at delegating. So I would be in charge of laying the mud on the wall, leveling it with a derby, keeping my tools clean, and finishing the plaster once it was all up and in place. I also let Rachel know how to mix felt and how much to mix to keep me busy. Then Rachel would be in charge of mixing everything, laying the mud on the table for me to work with, clean all the buckets in between batches, the tools, the tables, and the mixing paddle as well, all while making sure I don't run out of mud and that the mix is the perfect consistency. I think this is important to understand because I can really make or break this process. The timing with any sort of mud process, from concrete to drywall mud, is ever-changing and the most crucial part to get right for a good result. I also found that it is a constant learning experience and I'll probably never be 100% confident in being able to predict how mud will react. So that being said, let's look at the process in more detail. I load my hawk with as much mud as I can considering that I am on stilts and need to make sure I don't drop too much of the mix if it's runny. Then I can lay the mud on the wall roughly just to get it off the trowel. I then spread it using my elbow and shoulders to try and mimic the curve of the barrel vault while keeping a constant thickness. This usually takes a few passes. I am working from bottom up, from both sides, and then connecting the two sides at the peak of the room. Then I can level this batch with a Darby, which is really just a large magnesium trowel with two handles. I'll include a link to these tools in the description if anyone's interested. And then it's batch after batch, rinse and repeat. Thank you. 
You'll notice that after the first 5 feet or so, the plaster starts to get a lot darker. This was a real surprise to me as well, as we're using the exact same product, coming from the identical looking bag, same manufacturer and everything. I still don't know why these look so different. I've actually never seen Structolite in this grayer tone. To me, the grayer mud looked and smelled more like a stucco cement base than a gypsum plaster base, but there's no indication of this on the bag or on the manufacturer's website. If anyone knows what's going on, please put a comment below. I'd love to get to the bottom of this. So after laying all the mud on the barrel vault, I could sit back and let it set a bit before coming back and smoothing it out. I mostly want the high spots and ridges to go away and to fill the holes I left behind when laying it out. Then I went ahead and cleaned some of the corners and edges before calling it a day. And there it goes, base coat is set and hard, ready for the finished coats of line plaster. I really hope that the seemingly different substrate won't have too much of an impact on the finished product. I guess we'll see. Next week, I'll start making some samples for that line plaster and talk a little about why I want to use line plaster over other finishes. Also, feel free to check out the other videos in this series. They're in a playlist linked below. Thanks for watching, now get back to work.